Happy Friday, Seattle hockey fans. Before you get ready for the All-Star Game and for Major League Baseball, the Swingman Classic, let's talk Seattle Kraken. We are going to hear from some of our latest free agent acquisitions, and we have some updates on that front on today's episode of Locked on Kraken. You are Locked on Kraken. Your daily podcast on the Seattle Kraken. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. We are the Seattle Kraken. Hey, hey, what do you say? Happy Friday, Seattle hockey fans. Welcome to another episode of Locked on Kraken, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, where we bring you your favorite teams every single day. My name is Erica L. Ayala. I am your host of Locked on Kraken. I am the newest CBS contributor, CBS Sports HQ. Eventually, I'll be talking about hockey, but right now we're talking about women's basketball particularly the WNBA. So Kelsey Plum <clears throat> got that dog in her from Washington. I'll be talking about her, the Pacific Northwest connection. And of course, what is going on with the Seattle storm, but what's going on with the Seattle Kraken? Well, we talked about a few players that um, are preparing and Seattle is preparing for the arbitration hearings that included Vince Dunn, Will Borgen, Kale Flurry, And we have a bit news as our friends over on the too many men podcast might say i have agreed to terms with will borgen that's right will borgen returning it is a two-year contract 2.7 million aav 26 year old he had career highs in goals assists points games played hits and block shots last year season or excuse me in uh yeah t- last season 2022 23 again my year is all mixed up six foot three 204 pounds you can see some of the key stats here ranked second on the kraken in hits fourth in blocked shots made his playoff debut of course with the kraken totaling three points one goal two assists 132 career regular season games and also played uh with the sabers 28 points, five goals, 23 assists. Well, on the one hand, Maddie Beneers uh, presumably won't have to find another roommate. Jokes aside, I know a lot of us in the Kraken, uh, Kraken community have talked a lot about the, the uptick Will Borgen had from the inaugural season to season two. I think, um, you know, he's been a solid defenseman for us in a lot of ways. I do think that he felt more comfortable on the the ice, better decision-making in the second season. And so um, let's, Let's just take a quick look at again his stats. Um, and so you you saw the 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 keys, um, you know, overall what's going on with with uh the key elements that we should know about. Um, but let's talk about his stats. So, you know, he played 82 games, not getting much as far as goals, but I like the 17 assists, you know, willing to set folks up, uh, you know, plus minus, not the greatest stat, but uh, has been improving on the plus minus every season. So you like to see that uh, penalty minutes, uh, racking them up has also increased in that. So, um, you know, I think this is pretty solid. Will Borgen knows what to expect. We know what to expect from him. So I I like Will. I like Will Borgen. And, you know, we're going to kind of talk about this because there are a few other acquisitions that the Seattle Kraken made. We talked and you heard from Ronnie Francis yesterday about if they feel that, you know, there's a, a good move, a right move, they'll go for it. But I really think the Seattle Kraken have been um, tightening up, maybe not the, you know, the, the top tier defense or um, forwards, but they want to shore up whatever our bottom six is going to look like. And we'll need to do that because, again, no Morgan Geeky, no Ryan Donato, no Daniel Sprung. So 
that's where you get some other players, perhaps. And let's talk about Tucker Robertson. Now, Tucker Robertson also coming to the Seattle Kraken. Now, this is a longer deal. So Tucker Car- Tucker, Tucker Robertson, excuse me, this is going to be an entry-level contract. So this is really building up our farm system. This is going to be a three-year entry-level contract, 950K AAV. Quote, Tucker continued to improve his overall game this past season and finished the year as one of the OHL's top scorers, said Seattle Kraken general manager Ron Francis. We're excited to officially welcome him to the Kraken organization. Um, so, you know, I think it's going to be interesting. Um, this is a fourth round pick for the Seattle Kraken in the 2022 NHL draft. And so again, what I think we're, you were seeing from the Seattle Kraken is that they're shoring up the farm system for Coachella Valley and, and the like, and that they're really trying to see if they can push essentially the floor up. And I think it's an interesting approach. I think that we've got more work to do, but I'm open. I'm open to seeing how it's going to play out. And uh, there are two other signings that I want to get to here in just a moment. And we're going to hear from a Spokane, 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 Spokane. It's Spokane. A, a Spokane, Washington native later on the show. But first, as I told you at the top of the show, this episode of Locked on Kraken brought to you by FanDuel. Take your first swing at betting Major League Baseball on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets. That's up to $200. That's right. You bet 20 bucks and you'll land $200 in bonus bets. That's win or lose. That's $200 you can spend betting everything from the money line to the over-under to who you think is going to hit the first home run. All that on an app that is safe, it is secure, and it is super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you can get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet on Major League Baseball than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So sign up today. Head to FanDuel.com backslash locked on to get your $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com backslash locked on. FanDuel is the official partner of Major League Baseball. Thanks, as always, for making Locked on Kraken a part of your daily routine. We are here for free five days a week when we're in season. We'll later in the month be switching to our off-season calendar. But the point is, you get us multiple times a week. We're absolutely free on YouTube. Hi, YouTubers. Hey there. Uh, We're free on YouTube or anywhere that you listen to podcasts. And, um... You know, I hope you're enjoying the off season. I hope you're having a good time. I know there's a lot going on in Seattle. Uh, Chief among them, of course, Major League Baseball is in town for the all-star game. But of course, you know, I've got my eye on the prize for the winter classic. So we'll see uh, what we can get cooking for you for coverage when it comes to Locked on Kraken for that. But I mentioned there were a few other signings that we have to talk about. So we talked about Robertson. We talked about Will Borgen. He did not go into the arbitration hearing, so that's good. But then we have a player on a one-year contract, Pierre-Edouard Belmar, a Frenchman. And I can tell you what, as I was doing a little research on uh, Pierre Edouard, I really enjoyed his videos from um, the European Media Day. That was a lot of fun uh, getting to know him a little bit. I think he's going to be a pretty straight shooter as far as interviews, at least if you, if 32 thoughts is any indication. But I like that. I think that's amazing. Now, Pierre... Edward has been around the league for a little bit. He played with Philadelphia. He played with the Vegas Golden Knights in 2017, 18 and 2018, 19. He was with Colorado 2019, 20, 2021. And then with Tampa Bay 21, 22, 22, 23. So, uh, you know, he's played with teams that, you know, have a pretty solid caliber um, of play 
he um, himself ha has also played in Sweden with the uh, Swedish Elite League, or at the time it was the Swedish Elite, Elite League, now the Swedish Hockey League. And, um, you know, he scored 64 goals, 125 points in 238 games, winning a title in 2013-14. And um, face-off skills, this is something that I saw a lot of people talk about when it comes to this particular signing. He might be bottom six for us, but really adding to that depth, particularly when it comes to the face-off dot. So I'm excited to see what he's got. Do I think this is, you know, kind of to use a baseball term, y'all know I'm a baseball fan. Is he the home run hitter that we're looking for? No, no. But uh, he's, he's obviously... Um, got a lot of experience he's played with the organiz organizations that have won the last three stanley cups i mean between vegas colorado and tampa bay so you know i think um you're seeing a player that's been in systems that you know know how to win and he might not necessarily have been with those teams when they were winning but uh winning stanley cups anyway but um you know Again, some of that culture is, is always rampant. And and sometimes when you go to those teams after they've won a cup is really when you have to see what they're made of because everyone wants to beat the best. Hey, wasn't that us? Wasn't that us this year, right? And uh, when it came to our first playoff berth. So um, I'm interested to see what he brings to the table. Uh, I didn't really read some of those fast facts, so I'll just put it up again. And for those on audio, um, 13 points, four goals, nine assists in 73 regular season games with the lightning his second year with that team. He was Tampa's nominee for the bill Masterson Memorial trophy this past season. That's given to the player who best exemplifies qualities of perseverance, sportsmanship, and dedication to hockey. He was also nominated for the same award in 2017 for the Philadelphia Flyers. And so I like that kind of player. I think he might have a little sandpaper. I don't know his game very well, but just hearing him talk in interviews, um, very different from what you usually hear from hockey players. But um, so he has an interesting story. He's from France. His wife originally from Sweden. He's played in Sweden. I think he might be living in Sweden or has lived in Sweden. So um, I'm curious to see what kind of energy that he brings to the ice. And even outside of that and to the greater kind of Kraken community. So, you know, I think, again, this is Ron Francis trying to build perhaps from the bottom up and get some more veteran leadership. You know, this is a one-year deal with Pierre. Um, you've got a two-year deal with Borgen, but he knows the organization. And then we also have the Spokane native coming back. That's Kyler Yamamoto. And coming up on the show, we're going to hear from him. We'll take you to his media availability. And then, of course, if you want to watch the full media availability, you can watch that on the Locked on Kraken YouTube page. But, um, you know, being still conservative. I think these are still conservative moves. These aren't splashy moves. Could these be moves that they come into play at the trade deadline, whether that's this year or down the road? Well, again, some of these are shorter contracts. Um, so we'll see. Still seems kind of conservative. Trying to give it a chance. I wasn't really a believer last year, and we definitely improved. We definitely improved. So if we've got more sandpaper if we've got more energy, uh, particularly on the defensive end, then I'm going to be okay. But we're going to hear from one player, um, and that's Kyler Yamamoto. That's coming up on this Friday edition of Locked on Kraken. As always, I want to thank you for making Locked on Kraken a part of your daily routine. Your host, Erica L. Ayala, here reminding you that we are free and available on all platforms. Hello to the YouTubers once again. You can listen on your favorite audio platform, including Sirius SXM. All you have to do is search Kraken, and the Locked on Kraken podcast will show up for you. 
We heard from Ron Francis a little bit yesterday. You heard from Dave Haxtell a little bit yesterday. I told you the audio from uh, the scrimmage was a little bit wonky. I didn't want to have to run that through uh, the system here because sometimes the quality kind of uh, it, it comes out a little choppy. So, um, But it was great to see some of the young guys have a good time. That Stucky Cup was raised by the blue team. We talked about that on yesterday's episode, but I told you on yesterday's episode that there were two media availabilities yesterday, and we're going to hear from one of them today, and the next week we'll get into the other one, but we're going to go with the Pacific Northwest native Kyler Yamamoto. If you head over to NHL.com backslash Kraken, you can see a write-up on Kyler and his media availability. Also in that write-up, it's called Seattle Success. And uh, Bob Condor takes us through the Dumoulin and Yamamoto signing. We're going to hear from Brian again next week on next week's um, episode. And again, veteran defense, you know, I love it. So we're going to, we're going to go through that on, on Monday, but um, you know, also high upside is how Kyler Yamamoto is described by Bob Condor, but let's hear a little bit from Kyler. Um, Interesting kind of acquisition. This was, it took a few different turns and you're going to hear from Kyler talk a little bit about that before getting into particulars on, uh, on Seattle. If not, that didn't happen on um, this Friday, somebody was going to get bought out. Um, he's over 26. I'm under 26. So um, I'm, I would only be making one third. He'd be making two thirds. So um, obviously Edmonton want to take the less cap hit. Um, so that was kind of tough. Um, then they ended up trading me, um, you know, got traded and uh, called me in and then he's like, Oh, got, got you traded. And then I think maybe like literally an hour later um, says, I think they're going to buy you out still. So, we're going to see what happens. I'm going to talk to him later today. Um, ended up calling me back and said, you're getting bought out. Um, and then Ed, uh, Seattle was the first team that, I mean, he asked me what teams I wanted to look for. And my first thought was Seattle, um, you know, just being close to home and everything like that. So, um, and when we were going into the process, uh, you know, for looking teams, um, you know, he said we might have to wait a while, um, you know, we'll see. And not even a day later, um, he calls me and, you know, they made an offer and, said it was a good good offer and I said absolutely I'd love to be playing for the Kraken. Allison Lucan. Hi Kyler, welcome to Seattle. I know you know Adam Larson well. You your first point came on a goal of his and he sets up your first NHL goal. Have you talked to him or any of the other players on the team? Yeah, he was actually um first person who uh texted me um and said man you're going to love it here. Um you know, congrats on signing here and everything like that told me, you know, where all the guys were, you know, a lot of good restaurants and everything like that. So, uh, was super happy that he reached out. Mike Benton. Hey, Kyler, when you consider, uh, your potential role moving ahead here on this team, uh, for this season, what defines success for you? You know, just being that tenacious, you know, hardworking player. Um, you know, I really love how this team plays, you know, they play tenacious, um, you know, hardworking, gritty game. Um, and, you know, I love to play that game. So I think that's, um, you know, be my biggest goal in this season is, you know, stick to my game plan and, um, you know, just play my game. And that is Kyler Yamamoto. You heard him talking just now uh, or answering a question from Mike Benton. And um, also, you know, Kyler has been doing his circuit, uh, media circuit and, um, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to forget the podcast or the radio hit right now, but you know, he talked about that he is coming here. He, he's on the, the right side of 30 air quoting. I'm air quoting this for those listening on audio, but, uh, you know, there's this whole right side of 30. He talked about how that impacted kind of how he was dealt, but I think also he knows that this is a team that has opportunity and, you know, I've been talking a lot about how I think this is trying to elevate our floor, right? Um, as far as, again, um, kind of the more role players, plug and play guys. And um, I think what's interesting is obviously with seeing the departure of Geeky Sprung and my guy, Ryan Donato, 
Um, I think people know that if they're vouching or if they're vying for and fighting for one of those spots in the, you know, third line, fourth line on the forward side, that they're going to really have to work. We've seen that Daniel Sprong, I mean, was able to to really come in and earn some pretty nice ice time and get himself a contract somewhere else. And uh, there's opportunity, right? That's that FC opportunity that we talked about with one of our squad casts. And I think that's extremely powerful. I think it creates competition, a healthy competition within the organization. Maybe not. I mean, yes, competition, but I think it's just an expectation of excellence. And I think there's a way to do that where you are kind of putting people on edge and that's like, who who's going to be at the top? What if I do this? What if I do that? What if I lose favor? There's that versus saying, listen, you're all here. You're all going to be given an opportunity to get after it. Give us what you've got. This is how we play. This is what we value. This is why you're here. Now go earn it. Go prove it every single day. Prove us right. Not prove us wrong, but prove us right. The amazing Linda Cohn, when she was on the show, yes, absolute shameless plug. Linda Cohn has been a guest here on Locked on Kraken, but that's what she talked about. She and an athlete had that conversation and it, it changed her frame of mind. You don't want to necess- you're not looking to prove people wrong. You want to make sure you're proving the people who believed in you, prove them right. And I think that's how Seattle approaches things. Prove us right. We don't need to make deals at the trade deadline. This is our squad. Get after it. We believe in you. Go get a playoff spot. And that's what they did. That's what they did. So I like that. I like that mentality. I like that philosophy on paper. I want to, you know, on paper or electronically, I guess. You know, I think it, uh, we're still a humble, humble beginnings, humble um, uh, lunch pail, if you will, team. But uh, you can't, do not uh, judge a book by its cover or by its overalls, right? Um, we we are going to be a hardworking team. We're going to be a grinding team. Kyler talked about it also um, in, again, some of his media that he knows the story of this team and it being by committee, you know, lines one through four rolling out equitably most nights. And sometimes those third and fourth lines really having to, to take over ownership of the offense. So he knows that he likes the opportunity. He knows that that means he's got to be sharp. And there's something about that. There's something to like about that. And we need a little bit more of that on our NHL team. We need a little bit more of that on our AHL team. We need that. Oh, that sandpaper. Just We needed more sandpaper to get us over the hump. Definitely with Coachella Valley. I think we, we ran out of gas. If we're being honest in the Colorado series, we survived it. Um, definitely ran out of gas in the Dallas series. I believe it was Kyler also in his uh, media availability. Again, check it out on our YouTube page. But he said, hey, like I liked, I liked Seattle's chances against Dallas. I really did. So, you know, people are noticing what we're doing. We're trying to build it the right way. And I'm excited. I'm still not sure I'm ready to make bold predictions or maybe I will set the bar super low because I did that last time and we we got a lot higher than I thought. So yeah, eighth overall in the Pacific. Joking aside, I've said this before, but we are getting to that time where the Pacific Division was seen as such a weak division that meant that, our, of course, our teams were getting higher draft picks. Those draft picks are starting to come to fruition, right? They're starting to click. You know, I, I know that L.A. really wants to get Quentin Byfield going. Uh, you know, you've got Trevor Zegrist in, in Anaheim. I think, arguably, they, they've got a lot more work to do. But we see what Edmonton has been doing. Calgary, uh, they're in a little bit of a weird spot. We're in a weird spot. Vancouver, you know, I'm not a big fan of them. But the, the, and, and obviously, well, we know what Vegas did. My point is that, you know, we can't just rest on our laurels. We can't buy into the hype of, oh, we're just an expansion team or we're in the Pacific Division. We have to fight for it. And we're not going to surprise as many people as we did last season, but I'm looking forward to it. I want to see if uh, Ronnie Francis has any other things uh, cooking up his sleeves. 
we'll have to find out. I hope you enjoy your weekend. Let me know if you're watching on YouTube in the comments. Are you going to take in any of the MLB All-Star festivities? Go check out our friends on Locked On Seattle Mariners. I'm sure they've got a lot of great content coming up for the weekend. I have been loving what Converge Media has been putting out. I learned today watching their live stream on, on LinkedIn about the Snoqualmish uh, baseball team that played in Japan. I think they were there for two months. They had a great segment on the women's baseball club team at UW and, of course, the softball team as well. Uh, the HBCU Swingman Classic probably happening right about now or the time that this is airing. So, so much. I'm so excited for you, Seattle. I hope you're enjoying it. I'm living vicariously through all of you. Until Monday's episode, be kind to yourself. Be kind to each other. And you know what we do. We hold fast. We stay true. And we say loud and proud. Let's go cracking. I'll catch you on the next episode. Peace.